everybody! Today I'm going to be reviewing the Helen Underbust Corset made by Ties That Bind. Ties That Bind is owned by an independent corseteer, Jessica, who is based in Detroit, Michigan. So here is the front, the side, the back, and the other side. And I apologize if you can hear that super sudden storm outside, uh, but for the length of this corset, the center front here is 10 and a half inches, and uh, from the underbust to the lap area here is about 10 inches. You can see that it has almost a sweetheart shape in the front, so it actually goes down in the center front instead of pointing up and contouring underneath the bust like you see in uh, many other corsets. So that's what makes uh, this corset relatively unique. And in the center back here, it's 12 and a half inches long. I'm wearing this in a standard size 24, which is actually an in-between size for ties that bind. She usually makes corsets uh, four inches apart, so it's size 22, 26, 30, etc. But because the 26 seemed a little bit too large for me and the 22 seemed a little bit too small for these dimensions, I requested if it could be made in an in-between size, and she kindly said that it is possible. So uh, right now the clothes waist is about 24. I'm wearing it with a, a one-inch gap because the ribs are very conical, and after my accident last year I stopped training so my ribs are not able to taper in quite as much as they used to. The top edge here at the underbust is 30 inches and at the hip area it measures 34 inches. Like I said before this has a rather conical rib cage and then it's a little bit cupped over the hip so I find it very comfortable over the hips. Um, I consider it a kind of a mid-hip corset on me. It's not very high cut over the hips. My iliac crest is about there, so the corset comes down about one inch beyond that. I don't consider that uh, long enough to be considered a long line corset. But I think this corset gives a really lovely shape, especially under retro style clothing, like 1950s style clothing, because of this uh, conical rib cage, especially. And because this doesn't have a point coming up under the bust line, there's nothing to bow out really at the top area and kind of poke out from underneath your shirt. Now for the bottom here, you might want to wear, say, a girdle or a control top uh, panty briefs or something if you wanted to wear this underneath your clothing. Of course, it's pretty enough to be worn on the outside as well. So here is the Helen corset laid flat, and for the materials, the fashion fabric is a combination of this teal satin and black dupioni silk that goes around the corset in a uh, belt-like fashion. The boning channels are made from black satin coutil, I believe, and it has a strength fabric of herringbone coutil and then this really fun lining. And I asked Jessica to just give me any lining that she wanted. Uh, I wanted it to be a surprise, but I told her that I love fun prints, so she gave that to me, and I really like the way that it turned out with that sort of rockabilly. And for the pattern, I'm going to be completely honest with you and tell you that I have no idea how many panels are in this corset because uh, the lining here is sort of floating. Uh, the lining has one, two, three, four, five, six panels, uh, but I'm not sure if this corset was constructed in the exact same way or if there indeed are more vertical panels going down, but I really don't want to take apart the corset to find out. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy with the way that the pattern turned out, whichever way she did it. Uh, for the construction, I believe that the fashion fabric and the strength fabric were treated as one layer and sewn together. Of course, you can see that there are uh, these external boning channels on the outside, and like I said before, the uh, lining here is floating. And feeling underneath this floating lining, I do feel a bump here that feels like a half inch wide or possibly three quarters of an inch wide waist tape running invisibly uh, through the layers of this corset so underneath this floating lining here and it seems to start right here next to the busk and it goes back to this back panel as well i feel it right there and here's a close-up of the binding it seems to be made from commercial uh, black satin bias tape it's machine stitched both on the outside and on the inside here and you can see that there is a, a bit of a top stitch on both sides. This one has a very tiny top stitch, and this one has a slightly wider lip here. There are no uh, garter tabs in this corset, but I didn't request any. So if you wanted garter tabs in your corset, I'm sure that you could ask Jessica and she would be able to do that for you. The base price of this corset does not include the modesty panel at the back, so the original corset doesn't have a modesty panel, but I decided to purchase one. So this was a $25 extra, and this is 6 and one quarter inches long, and you can see it's slightly shorter than the back of this corset here. It's about 10 and a half inches. 
it's nicely rounded on the uh, on the corners here so it's not going to poke into you and it is boned there's uh, horizontal bones one two three four and it also has vertical bones one two three four so it's nice and stiff while you're lacing down and it is suspended on the laces with uh, this ribbon here so it's uh, the X's of the corset actually thread through the holes in the ribbon right there. You can see that on this side it's finished with black dupioni silk and on this side it's finished with black herringbone coutil. And I'm not sure that this could be considered a Mondesi placket in the front uh, per se, but the busk indeed is recessed a, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch so that when you put the busk together, you know, it's not going to pinch your shirt and it's, uh, you know, your skin or your shirt is not going to poke through there. So it does its job, even though it's, you know, not the widest placket that I've ever seen. The busk in this corset is 10 inches long with five loops and pins equidistantly spaced. And actually, as I was looking over this corset, I realized that it is a tapered busk. So it is uh, a little bit more narrow at the top, about half an inch wide. And then at the bottom here, it's more like one inch wide. So it gets wider as you go down. And this is actually the first corset I've owned that has a tapered busk in it. And uh, it's actually fairly sturdy. It has a little bit of flexibility to it, but it's certainly more sturdy than than a uh, standard flexible busk that I'm used to. Turning this corset to the side as much as I can uh, without bending the modesty panel, there are a total of 20 bones in this corset, not including the front busk and of course not including the bones in the modesty panel itself. So the eight that you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, these are all a quarter inch wide spiral steel bones and external boning channels. And I really love the way that they are equidistantly spaced. In some types of corsets, I sometimes get uh, pressure points or hot spots. If the bones are doubled up on the seams, it depends on the pattern as well but I generally feel that um, the pressure just seems better distributed when the bones are distributed like this as well and in the back here it feels like a quarter inch wide or maybe even three-eighths of an inch wide flat steel bone here and then right next to the back edge is a wider flat steel bone about half an inch wide and what's nice is that the back itself actually has a little bit of, of bendiness to it so it does curve to the lumbar spine now if you find that the modesty panel is not allowing your back to curve quite as much you can remove it but actually the modesty panel isn't bad either and testing this corset with my magnet uh, even the modesty panel has steel bones in it because I'm feeling a pull there and with the rest of the corset I do feel a slight pull as well and here's a close-up of the grommets there are a total of 34 of them 17 on each side it's a size double zero with a median flange around and they are set equidistantly um, I believe they are three quarters of an inch apart so they're a little bit closer together and quite a lot more grommets than I'm used to in some other types of corsets. Uh, you can see that they're also finished in black so that it matches the, uh, the silk at the back here and all of them seem to be holding in quite nice, no damage to the silk around. And pulling the modesty panel aside so that you can see the underside, nice big washers. They seem to be holding in quite well. Uh, they seem to have rolled nicely. I don't see any splits and they don't catch on the laces, so it's fine. Uh, there is a bit of more friction lacing up this corset because of the modesty panel itself, but I imagine that if I were to remove the modesty panel, then the lacing up would be quite smooth. So you can see that the laces are your typical 1 8 inch wide black flat braided shoelace style laces. Uh, they have minimal spring to them and they, they hold the bows nicely. They're quite low profile so I'm happy with them. The Helen Underbus corset has a base price of $200 US. If you wanted the upgrade for the modesty panel that's another $25. And this concludes my review of the Helen Underbus corset made by Ties That Bind. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you did, please remember to click that like button and help support the channel. And if you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to get back to you. If you have a corset by Ties That Bind and you really like it, especially the Helen corset, leave me a message below and let me know how you like it. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.